What's up? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> how are you feeling? Feeling good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Chuck Diesel, aka The Lone Wolf. And we are grateful today for our sponsors. Thank you to Sake High, their gluten free, all natural sake that you can get delivered to your door. Google it. And today we're also thankful for God's Favorite Jewels for sponsoring the episode. You know, I got my bracelet on, I'm a little charm on. If you want to check it out, just click the link below. And we're happy to have today's guest. Jade, hi. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, my name is Jade BDE, or Jade Vanessa, and I'm an artist. I'm also a business owner. I do braids, DP Bosa braiding, and I'm plant-based, so I am specialize in cooking. I'm going to be coming out with a cookbook in 2024. So. That's the name of it. I'm not going to tell you yet. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, that's the su summary of me. All right, it'll be on the lookout for those recipes yes. and for the music. Oh, what are you working on music-wise right now? I'm finishing up my album right now. I actually just wrapped up a documentary on that's my visit cool. back home. Yeah, it's called The Arrival, yeah. so I'm arriving to so. All right, well, yeah. I have questions about that. Yeah. Let's celebrate the release, though. Yes. And actually just having, you feel me, the whole idea mm -hmm. start to come to fruition thanks the gear up for the drop mm -hmm. it's a big thing thank you so what was the light first i won't say the first spark because you get inspiration the whole way yeah. but when did it come like together where you're like oh this is how i'm going to do my album or this is going to be the idea for the album so this whole journey out in la has been like, I mean, self-discovery, right? Because yeah. it's a new... I'm not from here. I'm from Boston. So I moved here two, two and a half years ago. And right. this whole album is that experience. But, yeah. Oh, has it been a good experience overall? Yeah, I mean, every place you move to is going to teach you good and bad about life. And in the beginning of my life stages, it was very candy-coated. Yeah. So to experience glimpses of bad this is the best place to be in la right because they're gonna see shit happen, no yeah you know so yeah it's, it's been good it's been it's keeping me well-rounded as a person and like you know that duality to myself as a dark and light being is also you know i'm coming to fruition <laughs> got you i got you yeah oh uh, what was it like growing up in boston yeah, it's cool i mean i went to private school all right so it was a uh, you know mm -hmm. yeah. I'm waiting about the religions. Oh, you think it's Oh, you said you went to private school. What was that like? Um, yeah, it was it was cool. It was <laughs> very simple, if you would call it. Because again, like private school doesn't allow room for error in the sense, you know, and everybody's kind of the same. Yeah. They want you all in the same. Uniform, like, same. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's a lot of you know, like not having an identity almost. Yeah. So now that I do have my own identity, you know, that's where I'm talking about that contrast that I have now. Oh, did you have like any classes that were geared towards what you do now that you feel like helped you? The only like in high school there was a a drama department. And so I did like a musical, um, and that's all, from the top of my head, that's all I can remember because honestly, that was mad long ago. <laughs> but yeah, I was in a musical. Did and, you like it? Yeah, it's cool. It's called Upon the Mattress. Right. It's kind of like, like a, you know, fairy tale princess frog. What was your role? Who were you? I was just part of like the ensemble. Yeah, dude, like the, the chorus and stuff. Yeah. Because yeah. like, they didn't know me yet. I was still right. like in my I wasn't shell. out there. Lee yeah. singing yet. Like, people knew about me, but, like, they're like, ah, oh, she's shy. Yeah, were you shy? Yeah, I was, because, like, again, they didn't really leave room for people to, like, express themselves, themselves yeah. and, like, stand out, yeah. you know? Did you feel like you had a big personality that people wouldn't be, like, you know, ready for? Honestly, not at the time. Yeah. Because, again, I, like, being an introvert naturally, it kind of just played out. Dude, I'm here. Yeah, I'm yeah. here, but I'm, I'm gonna wait my turn, you know, take an observer seat. <laughs> oh, when do you feel like you did step into like knowing that you had more to offer? Senior year. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when my private school closed down and I went to public school. All right. So 
now I see everybody in their own outfits, clicks, and all the stuff. And you're like, wait, yeah. you could choose what you do. Facts. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I need to buy some more clothes. <laughs> yeah, because I don't have that. No, you know, you like, like all my stuff is plain. The stuff, exactly, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Oh, what was the high school? Uh, it's called Ever High. Ever High. Yeah, it's just in my city. Oh, shout out to Ever High yeah, for introducing your girl to herself. Yes. Like, yeah, I would never go back. Would you ever go back to high school? Like, say you could go back and relive one year over in high school. Yeah, would you? I would. What year? Maybe senior year. Senior year? Because I, ha- I didn't have anything to lose. I was in a new school, the new kid. Yeah. I could have just, you know? Yeah. But I didn't. It was free. Yeah. No, I hear you. <laughs> I have a friend who was like, bro, I miss high school. And I was like, why? <laughs> why would you go back? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Some people, they loved high school. Yeah. I mean, again, like less responsibility. Yeah. Friends that aren't fake or maybe they are. Right. You don't know. Right. Yeah. Like, because everybody's just trying to be something. Fit in and so, be but, friends. Yeah. yeah. No, 100%. Simpler times for sure. Oh, yeah. Definitely. For sure. Now, especially out here, it's just like everybody just wants something or this or that. Like I haven't found like a genuine circle aside from like the people I've obviously been surrounded by. No, oh, yeah. You know, because that's events that happen. But if I was to go out on my own and like to these events, which I have, but again, not everybody's in that headspace to be like, oh, let's let's create, let's not. Nah, they're trying to have fun, get lit. No, I hear you there. Oh, uh, as someone who has gone to a lot of events. Mm-hmm. Also, hoping to, like, connect with somebody yeah. and work. Even when you are coming from a space of let's create, I feel like the reception just gets lost out here. Because, like, so many people, I feel like, are just hesitant mm. and unsure. And then there's a lot of people who are new yeah. to even what it is that they're aspiring to do. That's true. That they don't understand, like, all you have to do is do it. Facts. It's like any situation can become the starting point yeah. for a new situation if you're receptive. Exactly. And so that's what I feel like a lot of it is. It's just people aren't connecting at the same level, not yeah. that people aren't searching for the connection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like... When did your journey start as a creative? As a creative? Yeah. Depends on how you want to look at it. It's okay. like when it started, I had nothing to do with it. Like, personally mm-hmm. like involved me like i don't know let me do this yeah uh my aunt was the head of the children's ministry okay. at church <laughs> so she wrote plays yeah got cast automatically oh, of course yeah and so that's how it started that and just like having to sing yeah. at church and like children's church you know mm-hmm. in between sunday school what did you guys learn today and yeah. sometimes we would a little skit or yeah. like sing a song mm-hmm. and my aunt let it <laughs> so I could not talk. I could not talk. And so that's how I got, like, got started. Yeah. And then um, when I realized that I could be an artist and create something, I had a cousin who I guess started making music and I didn't know. Mm-hmm. But him and his best friend was like, come here. And I was with my other cousin. Me and him are the same age, three months apart. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, big cousins. Yeah. And so we ran over and they were like, bam. Battle. What? <laughs> like, we're 10. Yeah. I'm 10 years old. Yeah. And they're like, freestyle battle right now. Rap. And we both, <laughs> the way you're looking right now is the way we looked at each yeah. other. And we were just like, and they're like, nigga, rap. And so you, know, you got two, three times. Yeah. They're older. They never talked to us. We were surprised. Usually they literally would run from us. Yeah. Like, they know we couldn't go so far <laughs> and they could outrun us. So we're like, bro, they invited us. We got to do something. And then we just, are you first or I'm first? And we did it. And so I ran home afterward and I wrote down the lyrics from that freestyle. Yeah. And I took it to school and I told my friends I was a rapper. Okay. And it was kind of the same for you going to high school. Yeah. I had just moved to a new school. Mm. And so like people were figuring me out yeah. and somehow I ended up in a cool group. Oh. And so that's what I bought to the group. Like, yo, I can rap. Yeah. And they're like. Everybody started pinning lyrics <laughs> after that. And so I Trend never looked center. back. Never looked back. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. And then from there, I started doing other stuff. What got you into jewelry? My mom. Because mm-hmm. uh, growing up, I was at jewelry on 
now that I look back at pictures and stuff. Yeah. And it wasn't just like a two year old with his ears pierced. Like I had grown man jewelry. <laughs> like this stuff I'm wearing now. Yeah. I was a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> with a baby Cuban link on, like yeah, you feel me, and this is like ninety eight, yeah. like, and so I just looked back at old pictures, and then I was just talking to my dad the other day. We would be in jewelry stores, or just we'd be in any store. It could be Walmart, yeah. and she'd be like, "I'll go look at the rings, just cause." And yeah. she would just ask so many questions. What is it made out of? Is it filled? Is it plated? Mm. Where did it come from? Mm. That's 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 not that's cubic zirconia. Mm. And so for me, I'm 10, 12 years old. None of this makes sense. Yeah. But I'm looking at people like, you feel me, acknowledging the fact that they have to and answer her questions. So I'm like, she she knows what she's talking about. Right. So I just kept my ears open. And then really, it's my birthday <laughs> when I was like 20, I think turned 25. Mm-hmm. I was like, I have to go buy some jewelry. That's dope. And I did the same thing my mom did. Yeah. And I was like, oh. That's good. And then from there, one day I just saw, oh, I saw somebody with a, my birthstone. Oh. And I was like, I want that. And I looked up a pennant. It was like $100. But then I looked up the stone and I was like, bro, well, no, yeah. I can't go. I can't go. I can do this. Yeah. Like, I can do this myself. Yeah. All right. So that's really what it is. My mom gave me the appreciation. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't kind of come out of my pockets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, but that's real. Like it's it's a privilege to have the skill to provide yourself what you want, especially if it's material. No. Like for example, make your own jewelry, do your own hair. Like no, yeah, people will be spending bands because they can't provide for themselves. No, one hundred percent, and that's part of the reason why I even know how to do stuff like this. Yeah, is like as an artist, how many times have you tried to get something done and realize yeah. like how much goes into it? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it's hard to be independent, you know, because like you don't have a financial backing, like obviously the industry support artists do. So that's why like independent creators coming together to do things like this is it's dope because you're building your own network and eventually everybody's moving up. No, 100 percent. And it's like you can take the same content mm-hmm. and use it yeah. or you can take the same setup and use it. And just even like I was talking to somebody earlier where it was uh like five six of us together yeah for a project someone had created Mm -hmm. and they wanted to make songs Mm -hmm. as a person who's engineering i left that day knowing something else about engineering because one of the artists was used to mixing himself right and so i'm like oh man i throw that in the bag now i know like yeah so you never know what you're gonna learn from even connecting with other people but uh what was i about to say what was oh what was something that you've picked up from realizing how much went into creating your idea well to start all of my brothers i have four brothers older than me and they all are producers or rappers writers whatever video producers so like growing up i was always surrounded by people with a tool of some sort and then once they all combine those things like to see what could happen you know if people just work together obviously you know having a bunch of brothers there's you know some ego in there pride like oh well i want to do this better or do it on my own but like when we come together it's just a it's a beautiful gel right because everybody's bringing something to the table yeah and so having that accessible to me but then like being independent and like wanting to work with somebody else and someone's charging me you know, it's, it's a big difference. It's like, wow, like, it really is, like, I'm grateful for what I have and, like, the family or friends I'm around because, like, people that don't got that, they're... No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. Because uh, I had my cousins to, like, grow up making music with. Yeah. And so I've just been around people who are like, oh, bro, I wish I had someone to, like, sit and make a song with. Yeah. Or for me, it's like, bro, I miss having people to sit around and, like, write songs with well we're not yeah. even trying to write it's like yeah we're not doing it play some music but yeah and 30 minutes later everybody's over here like yeah are we about to record like, so and, and even that's dope because like again a lot of people just want to have fun yeah it doesn't always have to be serious you know like and again if you're paying for time in the studio for example like you're gonna be serious i was about because... to say that's what sometimes makes the separation exactly. in the experience because you have to exactly yeah. use your time wisely but I mean, I don't think no time is wasted. It's like, again, you're getting something out of it, whether that's an experience 
knowledge that you could put to your own thing or you know like everything is always worth the experience or value of time no for sure yeah uh do you feel like uh a lot of people start to like get kind of hectic or closed off once they start to realize how much of them is going to be required yeah i mean because i feel like as a being growing right or healing like you start to like know your worth right people start to take advantage of that or not depending on like if you're aware of yourself or other people right so like that's something i had to learn it's like oh like oh okay i can do your hair for free but then i know this person's gonna pay me this much or something like that it's like knowing your worth and like where you want to put your time so that's what i always think about when people are thinking about me or I'm thinking about other people as well. It's like, okay, if we're going to do this, let's have a good vibe and good energy because I, I appreciate you. But if I'm there in your space and, like, you're not, like, you know, it's just, like, a waste of time to you, but I'm actually invested, you know? It's, like, the vibe is off and it's not going to become abundant or productive because of the energy. You feel like that's more so what happens? It's just yeah, the I energy think- isn't able to flow because of the thought process and constraint with having to yeah. worry about the resources and whether the person even cares. Yeah, it's, it's about intention behind it at the end of the day because it's like, if we're all, oh, like we're all aware, especially as creatives, right? Like we all know we want to be able to do something. Mm-hmm. Some of us have the means, some of us don't. So we're all at like different levels, but we're all here. We're all mentally there if we just put it together. It's like, okay, like, let me put my selfish intentions aside and let's let's do this for this reason, just to help one another or whatever. But it's like that's what this industry creates though, is the the separation and the No, yeah, yeah. the isolation because yeah. I have to focus on myself. Exactly. No, yeah. And that's weird because I'm thinking about it now. It's like it's hard to pinpoint when that happens, but it does happen. Just because I think, like you said, with your brothers, mm-hmm. you get to a point where you're like, I want to do this. Yeah, because you realize how great you are. And you want to do it for an exceeding reason yes. as opposed for let's have fun. Yeah. And the competition starts to take some of the enjoyment yeah. and the connectivity out of it. Yeah. Drink to that. Thanks. Understand it. <laughs> Oh, since you've been out here, what has been your favorite experience? I didn't really experience life in Boston. <laughs> You're like everything. Right? <laughs> oh, but like my life, like it's just like seeing. Okay, one thing I do appreciate about LA and just like California is like again that self-expression. I Everybody hear. looks different and they look like themselves yeah okay if you go to boston mostly school oriented and sports are you know nine to five like everybody's dressed the same really yeah it's like oh that's the typical like you go to new york like personally i'm speaking from my experience Mm -hmm. in new york everybody not different but has their own, you feel me, style, flair, swag. New York, Boston, no? New York still has a creative element Bye, yeah. to it. You know, like, Boston, again, it's just very, like... What is it known for? Programs. It's, it's known for its universities. That's it? And sports and... Yeah. I mean, maybe I'm missing something. Well, no. But that's all I could think of. That's sports. That's the first thing I thought of. Celtics. Right. Bruins. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, in New York, being close. <laughs> not really. So people not knowing the accent. It's like, are you from Boston? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't hear a lot of people that, oh, I want to visit Boston for vacation. No. It's more like business or yeah. airport yeah. layover. Yeah. Logan Airport. Like, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. For sure. So I appreciate that. Like, the art scene here. Because, again, like, I just visited... Um, for Thanksgiving and I noticed like now that I left and came back there's all these like underground venues and you know like things that weren't there when I was there and yeah. like oh you're starting you're starting to get it I, yeah, I'll try to like, wake okay. up oh, yeah. but also it's kind of like the people that have left Boston 
my brother Naz, shout out Naz. He had a, a great impact when he was making his artistry known and stepping on, you know, stepping grounds. Yeah. People started taking those venues and be take making them, them you know, like uh, the main thing, yeah. you know? So it's like, and I, f- I feel like I've made an impact on artists that I know, especially like female artists that that want to do the same thing. Like me coming out here and then watching like what it could be. Like, I feel like I'm inspiring them back over there. So when I'm over there, it's like, oh, because I didn't get that support when I used yeah. to live there. You know? But now that you're like, she's actually doing what she wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. That's great that you have people who do support you. Yeah. For me, a lot of people go back to their hometown and they're like, nobody even cares. Right. Like, and I used to think that. But it's yeah. just like, maybe it's not the people you want to care. You get surprised by who's actually in your corner sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it's just like the person you went to school with, but they was in the back. Right. You didn't even really talk to them, but yeah. they remembered that one time when you was nice. Yeah. 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 You know, like it's those people that matter. No, sometimes it matters more because yeah. it's like they can live vicariously. Mm-hmm. You feel me? It's like, wow. And in a way, they don't have like no, like, no resentment. No, right, like nothing, no nothing against There's no reason exactly. to be upset they, about they it. They can be genuine yeah. in their support. Because it's like, oh, like... you Why? Like, genuine surprise yeah. and support. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, again, like, when I think about family, like, people that don't do creative things, like, let's just say, like, they go to school or work or whatever, like, um, I, I'm not assuming because I know this, but, like, I know people in my family that like see me and they're like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. But deep down, it's like, oh, oh like I respect you for like going after someone, taking a risk instead of like just falling into the pattern of what we all do. Right. But they don't say that. Yeah. They'll never say that to right. my face. But if I you know. See it in the yeah. actions and the energy. Yeah. When I am there, you know. And that's why I say it's beautiful to be able to say like someone yeah. opened up without any. You feel me? Reason right. from you to say, yeah. I see you and I'm proud. Yeah. And it's not your mom or your dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like genuine support is yeah. appreciated. And it's something that I feel like not a lot of people get sometimes. Yeah. But at the same time, hmm, it's weird. It's like a lot of people feel entitled to be complimented when they start to think they're great too. So, yeah. Hmm. And again, this is a balance. It's like, mm-hmm. don't walk around with your ego up your ass. Right. Like, be level headed. Right. Be humble too, because like people respect the humbleness right. more. Yeah. It's like, wow, like you're so great and you walk <laughs> around like it's like expected. Right, and it's more of a surprise. Yeah. Because it's like, yo, you can say so much. Yeah. But you don't. Cool. And then it leaves room for other people mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. It's like you're not trying to take all the space. Even if you do take a lot of it, mm-hmm. it's not on purpose, so there's still room for other people. Yeah. Like, and I feel like that's something that uh, just, I don't say any specific event, but we both spoke about like going to events out here. Mm-hmm. It's like with the fact that there's so many people and no one really knows who the other is. Yeah. Sometimes it's just like hard. Yeah. A lot of people pass judgment. Mm-hmm. You know? And that just leaves room for hostility. Like, I know so many people out here that have been, like, hostile to me without really knowing me until they've come to an event of ours or something like that and seen me and, like... I'm what hostile? Just, like, I don't know. Maybe it's just, like, their own internal battles or, like, thinking, like, again, like, having a judgment on me, thinking, like, I'm this way because I'm great at this. No, I'm, I'm a decent person, you know? <laughs> like... <laughs> I'm gonna make you laugh in the crowd. Like I'm gonna support you too. Okay. You know, and I I just think like the best way to be is just yourself and genuine. You don't have to like act a certain way. You certain don't have to way. fit a role to be exactly. Yeah. And I think I'm a lot of kidding. And not for real. <laughs> like a lot of people as artists out here, they walk into a party song. and put on the yeah. post it up against the wall yeah. with shades on. Yeah, like I'm too cool. Exactly. Yeah. It's like you're already blocking your blessing. Or I'm and the find, person. And finding those connections that you're trying to get. Yeah. You know, like, have fun with people and they'll actually break bread with you. Because that's what you're here for, right? Creating memories, not just being a... If you really want to be posted up on the wall, be a poster. Hang a picture so of yourself. You, you're like, if you're not going to interact, you might as well just send a cutout. <laughs> yeah, <really. laughs> yeah. No, I hear you. Um, 
what was the thing that got you finally to make the move out here? I won't say finally. It's not like you said, I've always wanted to be here. But like, what did push yeah. you to coming to LA? Mental health. You know, I was going through it rough. Um, and I was in school at the time. I was at Emerson College and it was dope. But again, like, I couldn't find my scene or like my group of people. You know? Where are you studying? Um, I was in this program that it's called the interdisciplinary major where you can combine two and just create your own. But I was taking a lot of like random classes, mostly history at first, because like those are the your requirements. Yeah. Um, but then after that, I was I was in a video class. I was in writing. You know, just a bunch of different things. Yeah. So, yeah, like again, they did apply to my life, and like I use that knowledge every day. But I think that I mean I know just based on my experience that you can gain more from actual like real world interaction instead of like from a book because like it's i'm a hands-on learner so like if i'm in the works of it it's like okay yeah now i understand it more like yeah i can read it and like it will be there but like i'm not registering it without like an experience to tie it to exactly yeah no i hear you yeah no but that's how it got here is i wanted a hands-on experience and I was tired of just like my environment because it was tied to so many like memories that weren't weren't necessarily the best for me, uh, but did add to my growth here. And they obviously like they only build you stronger, like whatever you go through. So it prepared me for here, definitely. Well, how'd you choose LA? Um, my brother was already out here, but also it just felt like a leap, you know, like. I'm a really go big or go home type of I person, mean, you know, just like, oh, yeah. if I'm going to take this move, I'm going to go all the way across the country, yeah, I <laughs> you know, so, yeah. And I kind of had a late realization of the same thing, mm -hmm. uh, I went to visit Washington, mm -hmm. and then I just didn't go back to Ohio, I'm from Ohio, Oh man. yeah, so I just didn't go back, Yeah. and then I spoke to somebody who was like, uh, I'm a trained actor, oh. and so I spoke to a woman who was like twice my age, mm -hmm. and was a trained actor, who moved back home. Yeah. It's like, she was like, I left. And then I came back and I've been here for the last 20 years. Why are you here? And I was like, oh, and I just looked at the map yeah. and I was like, Ohio, Washington, California. <laughs> I'm already this far, bro. I might as well go to Cali. Like, yeah. so no, I hear you. Wow. That's dope. What's life like in Ohio? Quiet. At least where I'm from. It's like, I grew up a little in Cleveland. Okay. And after I got done with school, I lived in Columbus for a minute. Yeah. But the majority of my, like, growing up, I was in a town of about 30,000 people. Oh, wow. Yeah, tiny. It's like, literally, some context, this neighborhood is at least five to 10,000 people. Yeah. <laughs> just the neighborhood I live yeah. in right now. And so, it was just quiet and, like, uh... Everybody really knows everybody. Mm -hmm. It's like once I got into middle school and started like sports and stuff, yeah. I'd be driving home with somebody and their parents. Mm -hmm. And it's like their dad knows my uncle from high school. And I'm like weird. Yeah. And then once I got older and just like, I was talking to this girl actually. And she just asked me about where I'm from. Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh, I'm from a small town too. And yeah. then I was like, Google the population. Yeah. It was like 150,000. Mm. I started laughing so hard. Yeah. I was like, this is just crazy yeah. that this is considered small mm -hmm. because mine was tinier. There's uh, Amish buggies. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Sometimes you just be on your way to the store and do 15 for the next mile. Wow. Because you can't cut the lines. It's one, one lane, one lane. Wow. Yeah. I won't say it's horrible. It's not the worst. I didn't mind it, especially with the fact that I lived in Cleveland for a little bit. Yeah. And then all my family's from the city. So, okay. like, by the time I was 8, 10, we were taking trips to New York during yeah. the summer. I went to Atlanta for two summers. So, it's like, I knew there was a bigger world, mm -hmm. which is a big part of the reason why I never went back once I did go to Washington. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, bet. We finally made it out. I'm not about to go back, though. Right. I yeah. want to go somewhere else. I don't want to be in Washington, but... We hear now, yeah. so wow. yeah, it was cool, and I think it was necessary, just with 
the environment out here and how it is so much it can be so overwhelming mm -hmm. i think it was really good that i was in such a small environment yeah and it taught me myself right it taught me just like having such a small circle of people around you mm -hmm. you really get to see how people interact yeah because you can watch the effect of someone else's connection with someone affect another person that's great. and you're like yo like they don't even talk how exactly. did you two and this one person affect three other people yeah. and so i won't lie i spent a lot of my time on the outside yeah whereas like everybody knew me i played sports i was in the drama club i was on the speech and debate team mm -hmm. i was in the av club so it's yeah. like i spoke to everybody but I wasn't in anybody's business. Yeah. So I just would hear and see stuff and be confused all the time. <laughs> and so now that I'm out here, yeah. it's beautiful. Because I'm like, bro, I'm not in high school no more. I'm not playing none of these games. Like, y'all be weird with each other and don't know what's going on. Yeah. I'm going to turn in my paper and get this A plus regardless. Yeah. Like, oh. Yeah. That's one thing I don't miss about Boston is like, Again, that small town vibe where everybody knows one another. I went back and everybody's friends, especially the artist community, everybody's friends with somebody that knows somebody. And then, like, I had just talked to one of my friends and they're like, oh, yeah, my friend, this, this and that was messing with my and she asked her out. And then I was like, oh, and then a few seconds later, I'm like, wait, that girl, that girl was fucking around my ex. And now they're friends with my... It's like, too many people know everybody. I'm like, yeah, I can't be. No, and as, as soon as you put your mind in it, like you said, yeah. wait, that girl? You're like... Is Never that... mind. <laughs> no, it's yeah. too much thought processing. Like, yeah. yeah, no. it's And that's another thing. Is like, you kind of like to think the world isn't like that. And think that you grow up and there's so many things going on. But then you get into big situations yeah. and things just aren't working right and you don't know why. Yeah. But then you get behind small circles and you realize it's the same, it's the same thing. stuff going on in the big. You feel me? Like, yeah. not to say too much, but how many people in the industry have we seen come down because of the way that they are or the way that they hold yeah. interpersonal relationships? Exactly. Whether it be selling somebody out, blackballing yeah. somebody, like, yeah, literally, you just... I have three people that come to mind as soon as the conversation is like, so many. Yeah. So many. I don't want to say any, but yeah. any celebrity you could think of yeah. has been tied to some. And to be able to know, like, mm -hmm. this happened. Yeah. I don't have to react. Exactly. Or I can choose how I react. Mm -hmm. It's like a situation, even if it's a bad situation, doesn't mm -hmm. have to become worse. Yeah. You don't have to add any fuel to the fire. Yeah. Uh, you could treat it like reading a newspaper headline. Because mm -hmm, you already recognize it. It's like, or it's just like, I can't personally do anything. Yeah. To f you, like, I could throw my two cents in, mm -hmm. but how far is that really going to get me? Yeah. How much exactly, energy yeah. do I have to expend? Yeah. Some people enjoy that, though. They love being an instigator. Because it's like, whether they don't have anything going on in their life, or they do, and they want something to happen to someone else so they feel better mm, with themselves yeah. you know like it's a lot of that too Again, oh, yeah. it's, it's that selfish gain and like everybody's intentions you never know yeah. until you see them and that's i guess i answered you know said i'm trying to figure out yeah that's part of the question with just the receptivity of yeah wanting to build a working relationship or even an internship or i like what you do how do i yeah sometimes i feel like people just ask questions Mm -hmm. generally out of interest and people are like you want too much <laughs> you're like never mind i just thought you were really good you know i'll let you be yeah. great okay. by yourself um yeah but i feel like you said earlier though we're all on a process in our journey mm -hmm. and it's just stuff that we have to learn as we go and some yeah. people get the lessons before others mm -hmm. yeah or too late yeah shout to that thanks like a little bit real Oh, what are your thoughts on the sake? It's very good. Like, it's not 
not like overdoing it. Right, you know, like, like it's, it's good, it's smooth, and it's like it's a good carrier. It's subtle, but it's not overpowering. Yeah, it has a flavor, but just as soon as you're like, mm, it's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Um, shout out to Sake High. They did yes. their thing. Oh, um, what's something that you're looking forward to other than the album drop? Investments. You know, like the more I'm just like delving into what I'm interested in, I'm willing to invest more without like a lack of mindset. Because I know like, oh, well, it's just going to circle back as long as I like believe in myself enough. Thank you. Know? you. In every in every aspect of my health, in my businesses, and my artistry, and my family, like whatever part of me I give, like I'm gonna receive because of my intention behind it. Again, all comes full circle with everything we talk about. I feel like that's a real strong mindset to have. Yeah, which is being like, no matter what it is I'm doing, yeah, I'm not gonna worry about it and stress it because I'm only taking the action for a beneficial reason. Once you do start to do that, I feel like you assess situations so it's different. Yeah. You won't even be where you're not supposed to if you're thinking that way. Bro, like, <laughs> like, I just have to, I have to carry that mindset because, like, if you let a little bit of fear, it's going to stop you from doing, like, so much. No, yeah. If I let fear stop me, like, everything that pe- other people were telling me about coming here. Oh, what are you going to do? How are you going to sustain yourself? Yeah. All of that is your own fears. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I know, like, I got me and God got me. Right, that part. It's God got me. <laughs> yeah. Like, even if I don't got me. Exactly. God got me. You just gotta, again, your mind is the greatest asset. Like, you gotta keep that as healthy as possible. And the big thing that has been keeping my mind healthy is pouring into myself, knowing, again, like, I'm okay. Yeah. Like, this little bit won't hurt. That little bit won't hurt. Next thing you know, next week, oh shit, I'm surprised with a big bit. You know, like, <laughs> so it's just, yeah. Oh, that's a beautiful mindset to have for real. Though. Thank you, yeah. What about you? What am I looking forward to? Getting this, you know, fully circulated. I'm excited. Uh, I don't know. I guess I'll, I'll just speak. It's simple. This is one of my problems. Mm. I be thinking grandiose. Yeah. It's like, I know mm-hmm. where I want to take it. Mm-hmm. And so until I have that step lined up, I always be like, man, nothing. <laughs> I'm not excited this yet. This is the step. It's like I'm building still. Yeah. But actually, no. Uh, I just recently decided that I'm going to get more of my merch together. That's good. And so I've been trying to you know, figure out what I want to do different this yeah. time. Because I already had sweaters and then i had christmas sweaters mm-hmm. i want to keep the same branding mm-hmm. but switch it up a little bit That's so i'm excited to play around a little bit okay and then start giving out some free clothes okay yeah that's dope. that's what's next free clothes <laughs> <That's dope. laughs> and then also this right here has been keeping me pretty you know mentally occupied mm-hmm. uh right here we have a bracelet from god's favorite jewels it's for you Thank you. Piece of rose quartz. And I'm excited about getting this like started. And the idea behind the name God's Favorite Jewels yes. is that we're all God's favorite. Yes. And even if you don't see it, I'm so telling nice. you, yeah. you're one of God's favorite yeah. jewels. So it's like a reminder you can just have with you to know that you're special. That's dope. Keep doing that. For real. Like that. It's crazy how something material has to like put that in put you. something in your mind it you is. know yeah but it's impactful because like some people need that, need that yeah. you know no 100 percent. oh i appreciate that thank yeah. you yeah oh. of course yeah thank you for blessing me with your time thank you oh, enjoy some great. sake mm-hmm. and we got another shot in here to wrap it up let's build this <laughs> Um, tell the people where they can find you. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good in <laughs> you can find me on all social media platforms at JVDE Vanessa. You can find me on jvanessa.com. You can find me on music platforms as JVDE or JVanessa. 
Just pick your poison. Yeah. The, actually, I just thought of another question. Mm -hmm. When did you do your first music video? Like, how far along were you into your artistry when you actually started putting together visuals? At the very beginning. I was in my senior year of high school. Yeah. And I took a visit over here with my brother. And we just shot a music video for one of these songs I had out. And it was dope. But I was, like, like not prepared. Like, I was... Uh, like, be, be, how do I say this? Like, I was ahead of my years. Yeah. Doing a music video, but I was like young, you know? You weren't ready for a video, but you wanted to shoot one. Not even, it's just like the concept. Like, I was riding around in a Mustang, and I'm in high school. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's just like, not something you're like, you would put together now. Yeah, for exactly. Yeah. It's like, it's very, again, like not knowing myself, but somebody else directing mm -hmm. taking the like presenting something other than you yeah exactly yeah so that was my first experience that video was called reckless and the song was called reckless it's good though that you can say that because mm -hmm. i feel like sometimes with just the fact that it was early on and it was yeah. a product that was produced you're like this is cool yeah of course this. and yeah. this is who you are now you yeah. run with that person but you had the like forethought to say that's not what i want to do yeah. I want to do this, yeah. but different. Essentially, yeah. I don't want to be like everybody else. Yeah. But everybody else wanted me to be like everybody else because mm -hmm. that's what's happening. That's what's hitting. What was used to. It was what was palatable. Yeah. And sometimes exactly. people will try to put you in what's palatable for them mm -hmm. because they don't know what it is you have for you. Yeah. A lot of things, a lot of um, comments I get when people like listen to my music, like they'll listen to... Right? A lot of people listen to, like, the beat first. They're not really listening to To the lyrics, yeah. But then, like, the people that do, they're like, yo, like, your music's really deep. I'm like, thank you. No, yeah. Because, like, there's something there. Like, again, like, I'm not just making something while you go study. Like, yeah, that's cool. You could do that, too. Of course. But I want you to, like, heal with me. You know? Hear what I have to say. And maybe, like, you're going through that. Just like allowing yourself to be receptive to that. Yeah, yeah. That's dope. Oh, I actually didn't ask you, when did you start making your own stuff and saying, like, I can be this figure? I think sophomore year, I was recording my own room. I was doing my own. Uh, what are you recording with? Um, it's just called, it's so long ago. I don't know why I'm so out of touch. <laughs> the, Give us some context. What year was it? See, like again, like when you go through shit, you know, you just go through like mental blocks. I hear you. I have a huge mental block with like my time, but I was living in New Hampshire at the time. Okay. I moved it all around Boston when I was in Massachusetts, but um. I lived in New Hampshire at the time, and I was recording in my studio. I was playing a lot of guitar and piano. Like, I was really invested into, like, what I can develop. I didn't know that you were, you feel me, an artist like that. I didn't know you play instruments. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. It's like, I'm trying to still, to this day, get in touch with that side of yeah, it. Yeah, I hear it's, you. it's the most broad form of, you know, like... Being a musician. Like, being able to produce is dope. Yeah, and if you can actually make those chords, you feel me, and not just put chords together... But come yeah. up with your own progression. Exactly. Yeah, you're making it. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. So that's that's actually something I'm looking forward to this year too. Actually producing from scratch. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna get my own guitar. Okay. Because obviously my guitar is in Boston. Yeah. But get my own guitar. Get on the keys more, and I'm really like looking forward to live music because my mom's in a band. She's in a cover band, but she does rock, blues, country. Very different from What's me. the name of Mama's band? Shout her out. Shout out Down Cellar. Down Cellar. Yes. D-O-W-N-C-E-L-L-A-H. Get with it. Yeah. She's dope. She's a life party. I was on stage with her <laughs> recently. Um, my last trip. And I was like standing next to her just like. I'm, I'm, Man, that's I, my mom? Like, like, usually I could do this shit, but she, she, I don't do it right now. mom was right now, like, oh shit, um, I didn't know. Like, and, <laughs> like, her band member's like, yo, I sing. I'm like. I wasn't ready. I, I, I just came to say hi. Nah, for real, like, I was like, oh, you know, I'll do some ad-libs for you. 
I didn't know none of the songs. So I was just like, <laughs> oh, I know like one or two. That's Got funny. you. Most of the time I'm just up there like. I'm a bop. Back up dancer vibes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, God bless that woman. You know, she laid the platform for all of us. So no, I hear you. So. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, you come from a lot of artists. Yes. I didn't know Nas was your brother either. Yeah. Oh, that was Trey was your brother. Trey? Trey? My cousin. Cousin? Is yeah. that Nas's cousin too? Is that what yes. you said? All right, bet. Two years, yes. year and a half. Uh, but he's like a brother. I hear you. The daily, like, they're all. I got so many like male figures in my life, which yeah. is like all y'all, my brothers. Oh, that's <laughs> crazy. So, how many artists are in your family? Shit. I don't like that. Instrumental, rapper, singer, whatever. Frost. Shout out Frost Dollar. Shout out Juice Money. Juice Money. Shout out Trey Rock. Trey. Shout out Humble Thruskin. Humble Thruskin? Humble Thruskin, yeah. Okay. Shout out. Damn, I really don't want to forget anything. Obviously, Naz. <laughs> Shout out Honey Doll. Shout out Paris. That's your family too? Yeah, no. Hey, I know Honey Doll. Yes. Hey. Shout out Honey Doll, Paris B. Shout out. My cousin John of God, like there's just mad artists. Like, wait, did I meet him? Nah, he's he's in Boston. All right, bet. But like, there's just there's so many people like invested. Shout out my dad. He used to be a DJ. Had his own studio studio called Studios in Boston. That's that's dope. So everybody was invested somehow. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it just makes me think because like my family, my every male in my family as far back as my uncle that I know. Mm makes music writes music and then when i start talking to my mom you know i would say like oh yeah. so and so so and so so i'm like that's crazy just to think like it really is something with like a lineage type thing like yeah not everybody does this like, yeah oh. it's, it's so crazy because again like even in your own family like let's say like your, your line of cousins and then your line of like your immediate family and then your line of everybody's in like my line of cousins strongly in sports us no music nice. other arts other writing public speaking like you know it's just like it's dope like to see people with their own lanes exactly yeah that's was something i was talking i think with uh one of the other guests her name was uh akazi and we we're just like yo to see somebody is their craft yeah it's like sometimes i feel weird when i see somebody doing something hard yeah but random like it could be the person who is flipping a sign, you feel me? Like, mm-hmm. you ever seen a sign flipper in real life? It's like doing backflips and stuff. Yeah. You're like, bruh. Yeah. Chill. Like, yeah. or somebody like chiseling, like mm-hmm. ice and flipping stuff. And then yeah. like, mm-hmm. you like, bro. My mom makes leather belts and That's leather hard. jewelry and leather carbon leather cutting, binding. I'm and like, once you see that, like, that snap of focus, and you just see something so meticulous happening. It's yeah. like, I appreciate it. No, yeah. And not everybody cares. <laughs> like, some people just put it on. I, and that's mind-blowing to me sometimes. Because I can say, so many times I just grab stuff, pick up stuff, go out the door, whatever the case may be. Yeah. But, like, within the first three to five times of coming into contact with something, mm-hmm. I'm appreciating oh, of course. what's going on. Yeah. Like, even with this sake set, like, it's nothing crazy. But that's just... But, like, the second time I opened it, I was just like... Somebody was there spinning. Who designed this picture? <laughs> but like, yeah. Somebody, even if this was machine replicated and printed, somebody chose this picture, chose this color, and the artist who made this piece made the hues of a certain way. The cloud mm-hmm. is shaped that, like, the forethought that goes into things. Yeah. And that's, I guess, something you were putting into us this whole time with intention. Yeah, like, honestly, like, Art is about slowing down, right? Because you have to slow down to focus. Mm-hmm. This this world moves so fast. Life is so fast paced that people, again, they just pick up Say a cup of coffee. You have to slow down to focus? You have to slow down to focus, yes. Wow. Especially for art because it takes, it's attention to detail, essentially. It's discipline. Mm. Is that what separates art from craft or yes. creating? Yes. The detail? Yes. The attention to the detail yes. shows the artistry? Yes. Mm. I like that. <laughs> oh, Shout out to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crazy because like these type of conversations, 
bring you a reminder too because it's like oh wait i am one of those you are a craftsman i'm a craftsman it's like this stuff like i don't even notice i'm in my zone the people around me they're like yo you've been sitting there for 10 hours (laughs) (laughs) you know no i hear you i remember actually so what was something that you were doing that kept your attention like that, that somebody had to point out to you? Well, when I braid my own hair, I'm up, I'll start at like 3 p.m. in the day and I'll be up till like 4 a.m. and then wake up early in the morning again till 12 p.m. doing my hair. And they're like, dude, you haven't slept. Goes, you haven't eaten. I'm you haven't. Focused. I was like, <laughs> I'll do it after. You know, but that's like, again, it's like all of that, like as much as I'm like ugh, tired, like it shows me like, you're really capable of doing something if you really want it done. No, oh, yeah. A lot of people have excuses for that. Work, life, stuff like that. Just work around it. No, you yeah. know, like, because at the end of the day, like, you're putting a limit uh, of what you can do. Ceiling on your or side. your time exactly. to do that thing. No. But you, but you got time to scroll on social media or your goal. I feel like that's why sometimes people get salty with, like, hyper focused individuals. Yeah. Because they're like, no, oh, chill. I'm chilling. Why aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember one time where I didn't realize I locked in like that. Yeah. It was the first time I was editing a music video. Mm-hmm. And I was with people, like, at somebody else's house. Yeah. It was a group of uh, my cousins and people I knew from high school. Mm-hmm. And I was on the floor, literally, in front of the, this is the TV, this is the couch, and I'm right here. Yeah. People cycled in and out the house left. I got there at, like, 12. It's 12 o'clock in the morning, and I'm looking behind me, and people are asleep. And I was just like... but i thought back on that like is that normal yeah i don't know that video was hard (laughs) i've seen this i don't know if it was like a like a youtube video or something but like i saw this form of media that was talking about when you get in that zone you're like opening a portal Hmm. within yourself that's why you're so channeled and that's why you're so focused and nothing around you because you're, you you're just right here you yeah. know it's still even like me like i used to write usually i write but like i was on my phone all the time just yeah. writing to the music and like i was so focused kids you not my vision i was like you couldn't see exactly i was floating over myself watching myself no yeah no I hear you. it's a it's a it's a beautiful process to be a creator and just like to have a mind that's powerful of doing something and taking you somewhere else exactly well actually i guess that's part of what being an artist is yeah whether it's a movie which is literally supposed to take you you feel me yeah or a piece of art because a lot of artists will create a piece with the intention of taking you somewhere yes. or expressing an emotion to you without you having to do anything yeah and so i guess it is the artist's job to open up that doorway yeah. for other people because sometimes music will be the catalyst to a realization mm-hmm. once you hear those words saying in that order and sometimes it's not even the words it's like as someone who writes words i don't know where they come from sometimes yeah you feel me? Mm-hmm. it's like the music i can literally feel it yes and i have to say something like yeah. i don't know what's coming out but it should be Right. It shook these words out. Yeah. So it's like I'm literally getting knocked on myself and opening this door for it's you. So because, dope. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess that's the one thing that like mm, just like trying to understand like how do you do it? Is yeah. uh, have you had somebody ask you, how do you write a song? Yeah, I'm just like I just let my mind flow. So how do you write? And a they song? hate that. <laughs> you just let your mind flow, that's how you write? Like I just whatever just feel it. Just feel it and just write. Like, stop thinking so hard. I always tell people that, and they're like, what do you mean? No, yeah. Like, just write. Don't think. It's hard to explain. It's hard, because it's like, again, like, you have to understand that you you can't expect you from somebody else. Exactly. In life. Exactly. Anything, yeah. How they react, respond, whatever, but, like, especially how they create. Sometimes other people need, like, maybe a prompt. substance, a prompt something to get them there yeah some people are just gifted yeah with it. And sometimes yeah. people clog up the gift and exactly because we're all gifted with it at the end of the day yeah oh 
uh, something that I used to run with really hard. Let's take the shot. I know, right? I already said take it, and then we had something else. I was like, that's shot worthy. But I remember I was the biggest advocate I know for anyone can do this mm -hmm. with anything. Yeah. Anything. I was always tell people, like, bro, if you want to do it, do it. Yeah. Like, if you want to start, start. Like, and I just remember like telling people you can write a song. And then being with people trying to write songs and then being with that same person writing a song like a year or two later. Yeah. And I'm just like, maybe I lied just because I can't put it. I don't know how to explain past what I already have. Yeah. Especially with the fact that it's like, I don't know where it came from. I just yeah. had an idea. And then after I said one word, it's not a song yet. So I had to finish it. <laughs> so I said something else. Yeah. Like. That's that's an awkward experience for me sometimes because like I'm a fast writer. I can write a song in a five minutes. Yeah. Maybe even less. But like I've been in I wanna see that. I've been in Not to I don't <laughs> believe you, but I would be like, <laughs> like I've been in studio sessions where I'm like collaborating with somebody. Yeah. And I'm already done and I'm just waiting for them. Them to finish. And yeah. it's, it's their song. Yeah. So it's like the producer will look at me like, oh, you're ready? Go first. And I'm like... I don't want to do that. Yeah, I don't want to do that. No, yeah. And it's also, it's like, again, it's it's how you simplify it or like how deep you want to get, right, mm -hmm. with the song. It's like, I'm going to see what you come with first. That part. Before I just... Before I, you know? Because like, again, if I'm collaborating with somebody, someone told me like, and I'm learning this presently, like, don't shy away from your greatness to meet someone here. On their level. Always be Yeah, great. no. J. Cole. J. Cole. I used to do that. I used to, like, be here or, like, write something mad simple. To me, like, whack. But people would love it. Not even. It's just, like, to not, like, overpower the, per the other person. Why? Naturally. I don't know. Like, it just... I just wouldn't let myself... No more. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm, I'm just at a... I'm at a level that I'm, like... Nah, I'm not apologizing for who I am, how I dress, whatever I do. It's like, oh, yeah. I need to stand in my power and know that I'm fly. And I can yeah. show up fly and not feel bad if you don't feel fly. And the thing is, you're empowering somebody else like that sometimes. Exactly, too. yeah. Because they see the way you move uninhibited. And they're like, if they can do it, I can do it. Exactly. And not in a, if they can do it, I can do it too. But right. like, yo, why aren't I? You can be the inspiration for someone else. And it's it's sad that that's the first reaction for some people sometimes is that like that, that like, oh, jealous or yeah, whatever. And yeah. it's like, no, it's not a competition. And like you said, I'm fly. You could be fly. Exactly. Like, this room in the sky, baby. Yeah. <laughs> this room up here for both of us. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. no. I... We were talking about writing fast. That's the last thing we were talking about. Yeah, yeah writing fast. Yeah. All right. What's one of your favorite songs you ever wrote? And I also thank you. I commend you on that. I usually like to think that I'm good at remembering yeah. three lines. And I remember the attention to detail part. Yeah. I wouldn't have got to where we were. Yeah. No. <laughs> just, sometimes you just have to sit for a second. You know, like when you're called on the spot. No, yeah. Once I was like, oh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Right. I hear you. Know? I hear you. But um, favorite song? Sheesh. I don't know. It depends, like, what side to me. I'm a Gemini, so, like... <laughs> You're a two-headed monster. No, for real, though, like... She's like, today I'm nice, tomorrow I'll kill you. <laughs> I don't know about killing you. <laughs> <laughs> like, not that action. Not that action. <laughs> but, um... Jeez. Jay Vanessa, I love... Um... My Ocean album. That was my first album I ever produced myself. Not... Produce, but like drew. I picked out beats and I drew my own concept, and like that was it. People I collaborate with. My favorite song. No, I mean I guess like I'm gonna just say "J'adore." It's an unreleased single. It's very out of my lane. It's like disco, retro okay. pop. Almost. Okay. Yeah, it's like given like. Kind of like Whitney Houston, like you go for the big vocals. Different. No, not even that. It's okay. it's like it's like um. Just more like the fun aspect to it. Yeah, the fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Whitney, you feel me? Yeah. 
Oh yeah. Little yeah. pipes. Uh, and that's another thing. <laughs> that's I also like shelter that a lot. Oh, you have a bigger voice than you should. I us. do, but I'm not ready to re- reveal that, you know, because then I don't want that to be expected of me every time. I hear you. Because I'm not always that person, right? You know. I hear you. So little by little. Yeah, I feel like what it is is I you gotta show them. Yeah. Just let them know. Yeah. But I also hear you with the that's not the person. It's like similar to uh, you were saying with your first video. Mm-hmm. I dropped a whole EP. Yeah. And I think I think I perf- you heard the song. Oh, it was my first single that you I'm performed like, it, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's sleazy. Mm-hmm. He's okay. like, it started as a joke, and I was like, bro, I'm about to make a song. Yeah. I made the song. He loved it. My roommate loved it's it. Isn't that crazy? All my friends loved it. My family, that's hot. Literally, every person to this day. The fact that this generation takes simple as digestible is, it's it's a little depressing for me. Because it's like, I'm trying to connect on a deeper level and like, you know, like, Bill. feed and feed something that will like help you. Yeah. But people rather turn on ski and all these Have things. Fun. It's become yeah. a means for entertainment and fun as opposed to anything else, anything else. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's any separation between the music industry and the entertainment. Like There isn't anymore. anymore. There isn't. And not even just entertainment or TV. The music industry has become, I'm thinking of this now, mm-hmm. the new reality TV low-key. Just because social media has given us the behind the scenes of yeah. a lot of people. And the attention, the people who do take the regular attention turn it towards the same types of drama. Yeah, like, like a blue face, for example. As a reality TV show. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, excuse me, uh, reality TV has also done its job in helping support musicians and not in a bad sense because some of the shows, shows, you feel me, like Safari has been in a TV show. I don't know nothing about him to speak on who he is or yeah. why, you feel me. But Ty Dolla Sign, like, has been in reality TV yeah. shows. Like, Cardi started in TV shows. Yeah. And look, I remember when I was driving in my car. This is when I knew it was over. I said the whole song and turned it up when Bodak Yellow came on. And it was like the third, fourth time I had ever heard it. Yeah. And I was literally turned it up. And I stopped and I looked at the name. And I was like, bro, you don't even have any. You know what I mean? Like, if you see Lil Wayne, there's something there. Even if I were to see, like, T. Grizzly dropped the same year, Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure, as uh, Bodak Yellow, Mm -hmm. his first day out. I just knew he was from Detroit, and that gave me some reason to turn it up a little bit. I knew nothing about this lady, other than my mom said, yo, my mom, see, you don't know rappers? Like, I could ask me five, who's Jig? She don't know. Who's Mac Miller? She don't know. Why does she know Cardi B? And so, as soon as I started rapping along, and I didn't even know what she looked like, I said, it's over. It's mm-hmm. over, bro. And this shit is actually hard. <laughs> but why, though? You know, like, it's crazy. It was so fun. It was so fun. It was too fun to ignore. It was so fun. How do we translate fun? Right? You know how, like, behind the fun song is, like, a terrible message. If you take verbatim and live it out, yeah. It's like, if you take it into accounts for character or how to behave. So how can we do that but good? <laughs> that's the artistry. Exactly. And that's what our goal is. No, 100%. The industry, is to be that opposing force. That makes you stop and ask yourself, why am I doing this? Yeah, every day. What is this, the intention? What is the intention behind this song? Why am I listening to this song now? Or even what was the intention? And actually, I do have an answer for your question. Mm. And my answer is in my music. And I'm just not thinking of that. And I won't say it's in every song, mm. but listen to any song that I have, except for Sleazy. Yeah. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I won't say except for, because in a sense... I guess it was necessary. And this is, again, me realizing. Sleazy was necessary for me to step into... To, like, open that gate. The confidence. Yeah. It was very. It was a very egotistical song. Mm-hmm. You feel me? 
I can do what I want, when I want, however I want. And it's as easy as the flick of my wrist. That person is necessary sometimes because we have to remind ourselves of our power. Yeah. But it's the way in which we yield that power that matters because that same message could have been delivered. I could have said, I do what I want and say what I want. You feel me? Yeah. It is easy, but it wasn't easy to do and say what I wanted. So I delivered the message in the way that was easy. Yeah. But at the same time, now, the way that I feel like it's done is through the thought and the intention yeah. behind what you're doing. Because you can have a fun song. You can have part of what makes a fun song, in my opinion, is the tempo. Yeah. You feel me? The instrumentation, mm -hmm. though, the pitch that you're delivering it in. If you like, big, bad, that's another. Like, it was a higher pitch and it was very boom, 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 staccato. All right, fast paced, fun. Yeah. Let's do that, but put different words in there. And it's a matter of catching people's attention and then slipping it in before they realize what you're even saying, but they sang it too. And that's what happens with some of the fun songs is that they caught our attention before we caught the lyrics. Is that you rocking along because this bass line's stupid. Sorry. Which you didn't realize they said, get silly. Like, I'm not trying to get silly. I want to get smarter. <laughs> like, like, oh. It's like so many people in this industry are criminals. <laughs> yeah. But and this is one thing that I do try to stress to people who like have so many opinions on the music industry, mm -hmm. specifically R&B and hip hop, because of what we're feeding into when we're looking at the artists. Yeah. And I'm like, you do realize that all of the music is catered this way because of what's required to get to this level. Yeah. And like we were saying earlier, the financial backing that a record label provides to you. Yeah. We've gotten to a point where, no offense, I'm about to name some people I rock with. Gucci, hard. You feel me? Wayne, hard. You feel me? I, both of them, their backing did not start record label. They took it there, but they became a blueprint for the industry. Yeah. You feel me? Because the labels didn't have to. Cash Money Records was already eaten. Like, even Jay-Z, so I studied this. Jay-Z was already over a million strong in his pockets before he was the rapper we know today. So when it came to label discussions, it was a totally different conversation. Yeah. So he didn't have to fall in line with a persona or a way to be. And the reason that matters now is because record labels are looking at partnering with artists differently. And they want you to be able to move in a certain way yeah. when it comes to your notoriety and what you can yeah. do for yourself. It's like, if you can get this video and this song done on this level and you're already working with industry people, yeah. anybody in industry, let's just be honest. I've bought beats from people who aren't even in industry but have sold a beat to somebody in industry and they're not starting at lower than 500. And that's nothing. It's nothing. $500 is nothing yeah. when we're talking music industry. Yeah. And so for a label to be able to put somebody on and invest in them to put them on the TV, they also have to be able to do something themselves. Mm -hmm. And the average single needs $250,000. Yeah. So unless you're coming with $250,000 into this conversation, you're not dictating your, you're not dictating your appearance. You're not dictating what single we're promoting. We're not, you're not dictating who's producing this. Like we need this producer for this name. And you need to drop this video with this concept because it's what everybody's doing right now. And that's how we get into the situation that we're in because yeah. the money's not there to do it different because this is what's working. We see this has worked for these people in the past and we're not going to put money on something that we can't see already being in this data. Like, you want Chance the Rapper it? Chance the Rapper was one out of 30 artists that dropped that year with that type of... Yeah. No, it's not working. Like... So that's really the problem. Because even, like I said, I'll, I'll be behind the scenes just figuring out. Wiz mm -hmm. Khalifa was already eaten. He was already kind of signed, like yeah. indie-wise, before he went with the big Rostrum records and then Rostrum took him to the label he's with now. Mm -hmm. It's like, no shade. But even his indie was way better than most people's start. Yeah. And so like that partnership, that conversation he had when it came time to be on a label was different. And even, like, Big Sean, like, 
I'm not, I can't speak for Big Sean's label wise. I don't know. And I'm not speaking for Wiz's label or anything. I just know the history. Like he started one way, he was independent, he got signed, they worked that signing up until a better deal until he was a mainstream artist site. Mm -hmm. And so it's like the funding behind getting to that point was bigger than most indie artists come up with by themselves. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of the people who do it trap. Nothing against the trap. But it's like we can't just promote the trap. Even if we're coming out the trap. If you're coming out the trap, it's because you don't want to be there. So why promote that message over and over? Yeah. It's just like putting your listeners back in that cycle where you were. You know, and it's like we never get to here. This quote from me has been in my head for like the last week or two. And he was just saying like, why would I want to hang out with niggas who be in the hood and worry about catching bodies? This nigga got 30 bodies on him and he's still talking about load up the chimney. Da, da, da. Why would I want my energy around that? Good for you for leveling up your mindset that way. What the hell are you rapping about, though? I know. Like, I was so perplexed. Like, literally before I went to sleep last night, I thought about that. It's contradicting. And I was just like, why am I thinking about this? It's crazy. But it's even crazier for him to say that he don't want to be around the people he be hyping up. Stop feeding us that music, bro. So. The agenda. <laughs> no, nah, that part. A lot of people don't believe that. The stuff is catered to us a certain it's way. So certain real. Reasons. And like there's like that universal law that you have to put it in front of you to not get the karma. And a lot of That's people why it's right in our either. faces. But because it's right in our faces, it's not believable. Or it's a joke. They're kidding. Yeah. But bro, how many jokes is going to be here until it's not funny? Like, yeah. no, I hear you. There's, uh, I just saw something with um, the Denver airport. You see like the stuff that they put in the airport? They put like a tower or like a pyramid, not a pyramid, but a statue. Mm -hmm. A statue, and it says something about like, oh, what did it say? I forget it. Let me, let me Google real quick. Mm -hmm. Denver Airport, what's in it? The perfect timing. Let's cut this whole Google part out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a Baphomet statue. Oh, yeah. Yeah, conspiracy, it's a horse. But when I was watching the video, they were like, part of the reason why they put this in this place, because it's a high traffic area, is because they can't do or say anything. And they were saying, like, what's actually going on in Denver? Yeah. They put this in the airport because they know stuff goes on in Denver. So if people are going to be coming in and out of this place, they have to know that something is going on. It's so wild. It was a horse. Man, I wish I could find the actual... So, this is a secret bunker still lives with people. All right, I'm telling you. Yeah, you see, but that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Have you heard about lizard people? Yes. What do you think about the lizard people? No comment. That's not, what I think. Not at all. I like. I would say this. Some stuff I saw, I was like, interesting. Hmm. I mean, I don't believe one thing about like people in the industry, right? I don't believe. That guy, I think they just live underground. Like everybody, some people die. No, no, some people like, are sacrificed. Some, I hear you. Some people are old. That too. Was, some of the old people. But just some die. people that just like don't want to do it anymore, just gave up their identity and tucked away. Not what is about clone people. That's real. People have said so many people are clones. Of course. But this is the <laughs> one reason why. I'm like, there's room. If you look at contracts, they have the right to your voice, your features, your appearance, and likeliness. What does that mean? Exactly. <laughs> and, and a lot of these people don't read contracts. And this is another thing. It'll say throughout the here known and to be discovered universe. Your soul. They have your soul. The to be discovered universe, like, where are we going? How far are we taking this single? Like, <laughs> I, I, I thought this was just dropping on iTunes and Apple Music. Nah. Like, there's only what, 44 main distributors for music? It's crazy. Uh, but you want the rights to represent me throughout the here and further known universe for perpetuity. So for forever, you want to have the rights to my name, my face, my voice, my likeness and appearance throughout the universe. Forever. 
And people that try to people that get successful and try to buy out their rights and buy out companies like Michael Jackson buying Sony. That's something that I feel like a lot of people don't realize. Michael Jackson was low-key one of the most powerful men in the entertainment industry for a short period of time. He owned the Beatles catalog. Didn't yeah. get 50, 51% ownership? Yeah. So to put this into a little bit of layman's terms, when it comes to products and companies and more specifically record labels, and I don't even say companies, companies will work together and they won't do 50-50 splits. A lot of the times when partnerships happen, they don't do 50-50 splits just because that 1% makes a big difference when it comes to making big decisions. Mm -hmm. So the fact that Michael Jackson became a 51% owner meant that he had more power than some people who had even started the company. Can't have that. So what they do? They ain't have to do it. Made him do it to himself. Yeah. Shots to Michael. Yeah. And Kobe. Think that's what happened to Kobe? Kobe was about to start a, a league in China. I did not know that. That's interesting. Giving me something to go look at. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who's your favorite basketball player? I'm not I'm not a sports person, but when I was, it was Kyrie Irving. Okay. Why? I don't know. And that's that's the part that's why I'm like, I'm not a basketball person. Silly. All right, these are okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, um, we already wrapped it. Yeah. Um, continue talking. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it cut, but um, yeah, Kobe was definitely my favorite. Yeah. And it was just because I grew up with him. Yeah. Kyrie was a dog. He was fire. Yeah. His handles was next level. Yeah. I don't know. I think it was just hype based. Because again, like, I was just. I was the introvert art person. I was drawing, painting, and like my friends were the sports people. It's like, oh, whatever you like, I like. I hear you. Yeah, so. Yeah. I yeah. liked sports until I quit playing them. And then it's just. Like, yeah. My yeah. attention just went elsewhere. So it's like I never stopped liking them. Yeah. But I have no idea what's happening, bro. I can't give an opinion. Yeah. Like football, you're going to lose me. I can understand basketball, but. Downs and markers, and I'm like, uh, you don't understand downs? Well, no, I just like, I don't know the point system. Oh, a I touchdown? Just, I didn't know a touchdown was like three points. But Phil, no. Oh, you see, like, <laughs> but you see, like, that's why I'm not. <laughs> that's funny. It's cool. Yeah. That's funny. No. But <laughs> it's fine. It's not for everybody. It's not yeah. for everybody. And again, I feel like that just goes back to like the industry. It's like there's no you don't even have to have talent. Just have an act. Or That's do what we say attention. and there you go. Yeah. People gotta like it. When people like it, you get people to pay money for it. Yeah. But what they I mean, yeah, the majority of the audience is like they are entertained by this stuff that is not helpful or useful, but there's an audience for everything. Oh, yeah. Let's say there was, because I know there's a, a growing population of people that are interested in, like, the light stuff, the good stuff, the healing, the... And it's not a matter of people not being interested. It's just a matter of what we see. Exactly. And what's promoted over and over becomes the norm. But again, yeah. That's yeah. the agenda, so... And so it's a matter of breaking through. That's the problem, especially when it comes to music nowadays, because how many songs get released in a day and then mom and yeah. a year. And so once you reach that threshold though, like look at Nipsey, you get eliminated. Once you have enough power to change or to they don't want you there. Cause they're like, no, you're gonna disturb everything that we have going on and we don't need people to turn on us because we're making money. Oh yeah. But it's like you could probably make money with the good stuff too. But again, it's more, it's fruitful for companies to feed off of consumers' depression and all this stuff and all their stuff. It's easier because we know it. Yeah. And we can already control it. It's like the devil you already know. You don't go with the devil they already know. Yeah. But 
I swear, like you said, it just comes in with doing your part. Doing your I mean, part, yeah. Doing your craft and pushing it as hard as you can. Yeah. And hope that others gravitate towards it and push it and pick it up along the way. Yeah. And that that part about disguising it. Until you gotta learn that hard. I, I think I have. You like, know You in general? It's just on the spot, again, like I said. But, yeah, it sucks. It's gonna happen, though. The change is happening. Well, that's exactly what Akazi said. She yeah. was like, I feel like it's here. I feel like we're here. We're here. I was like, okay. It's just like, don't stop. Because we're the only ones going at it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, all these... I feel like Earth Gang, they push the folder. Yeah. I mean, they push the envelope a little. Jix. Mm-hmm. Oh. For a while, I thought Janae Echo was good. Yeah. Because she's just as in it. But do you think it's a matter of like where the people stump, like start from or where they end up at? It's a good question. Because even with this whole Doja stuff, like, People are saying it's not her, or she's gone this way, or she's gone that way. And it's like, what happened? You feel me? Again, it's just like how bad people want to have it. You really want to have it? I need you to show your complete oath and alliance to Baphomet, or whatever. Whoever. Baphomet? Baphomet, yeah. See, I, like, I'm not even in touch with these people. And see, like, I'm not going to lie. As a 16-year-old... I was scared. I was in the room. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god. Like, going through it. Yeah. I quit listening to Yay. I honestly, I quit listening to rap, low key. Yeah. Like, this is like 2014. No, not even. It's like 2011. Yeah. <laughs> like 2011, 2012. Yeah. I'm still in high school. Like, no, the music industry is after my soul. They want to kill us all, and the world is going to hell. They're energy, energy harvest. Like, I have been on Wikipedia. I've just been on the internet. And this was before the internet had, like, pages that were, you feel me? Yeah. This is not true. We're, like, web-checked and fact-checked. Like, it was probably a good month's journey of every day after school. Yeah. I read something that told me that we was all aliens. I read something that told me the world had been started by aliens. I th- <laughs> Somebody saying they were coming to industry harvest and to turn us into worker slaves so we could mine diamonds because that's how oh, they... Okay. I was in it. Just like, oh my God. For me... Oh my God. <laughs> for me, all that started with the taking shrooms and stuff. <laughs> I was sober as hell. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it means. Like, coming from different backgrounds, like, private school is just... God and we'll have you, we'll save you. And then I take shrooms and I'm like, this is the real world. <laughs> We're all a slave. And the, you're either a slave in the industry and like a puppet, or you're a slave down here, the nine to five. And... No, there's different levels of being a yeah. slave. And sometimes it's this... just like you're a slave to whatever it is that holds you. Exactly. Whether it's a routine, a person, like a mindset, a habit, all yeah. of it. Yeah. Who's like a slave is just somebody who has a master. Yeah. Oh. And when that master is not yourself, you're in trouble. 100%. <laughs> Self mastery is key, right? If you want to be Buddha. <laughs> what's, well, what's your goal in life? What's my goal in life? With yourself, like reaching your highest self. There is no. There's no goal. Like, how can I reach my higher self if I'm still alive and working? Like, so, you, you so do you reach think... Higher self completely. I don't think I'll ever reach it completely. My goal within myself is to be at peace always with all situations. Okay. At the same time, you know, I need a bag. Like, I'm not going to friend. Yeah! <laughs> but at the same time, yeah. I've learned the other part. Because at first, I didn't know what the determining factors even were yeah. outside of other people's recognition of doing what I was supposed to. Yeah. And not even what I wanted. I didn't know what I wanted, which is obviously beautiful because that's how I do so many things. Exactly. Because yeah. I just did what people suggested or thought I should or would be fun to pass the yeah. time. And I just did that. So similar to you, where it's like you said you were in uh, private school and you, it was set. Yeah. I feel like it was like that because I made it that way because I was a real like, what keeps me away from 
You feel me? Like, you know, yeah. I'm not trying to get in trouble. I don't need to hear this yeah. nagging. Like, I don't, no drama. Like, what is it that I need to do in order to go back in my room and read this book? Like, what do I have to do so I can get back to playing this game? Like, yeah. and I did that with my whole life. I would just put stuff out like this. Like, all right, at work. What do I have to do at work for me to be able to just walk around and look at my phone? Fold all these clothes, wipe shit down, clean out the dressing room, and help all the customers. I'm out here picking out outfits for people. Come on now. I can't do more than that. You yeah. feel me? Like, all the clothes have been folded for the last hour. I'm redoing <laughs> stuff. I would just walk around and talk to people and be on my phone. But it's because I made that precipice where it's like, yeah. knock out this and do this. And that's the way I looked at my whole life. Yeah. Until it got to a point where I was like, bro, I don't even want to do this. Like, I don't nice. know why. And I had to ask myself, what brought me to this moment? Mm-hmm. And part of it was the fact that a part of me knew I didn't know. But this was something that I could be okay with doing. And in the meantime, I'll figure it out. Yeah. And so, yeah, somewhere along the way, I realized I just love creating and making music. Really, if I could do anything all day, it would just be rap. Right. Or just write songs. But if I could do anything, it would just be making music all day. And I guess my end goal is to be able to have the means to help people come up with what they want. Because, yeah. like... It took me a long time to even figure out what I wanted to do beyond let's write a song. Yeah. And then, like, do I want to make a video? How to do it? Like, where do I record? How do I make this song sound good? Like, how do you shoot a video? Do you call somebody? Like, what software do you need? There's a lot of questions. Yeah. And it's like, there's a lot of people who have a lot of talent and a lot of potential. And it can be so much easier. Yeah. Once I, like, learned how to do stuff and then I stopped trying as hard. Mm-hmm. My bro, this is so much fun. And this was so easy. Yeah. Like you said, I could write a song in five minutes. Mm-hmm. What are we doing? Like, come on, stop fun. Like, again, like, industry people having, like, designer stuff. Yeah, we'll put you in free clothes. Drip. Like, now you're on eBay selling this. Exactly. For 15, honey, so you can pay your rent. Like, yeah, like, get in a black card if those exist. This, yeah, yeah get in a black card where you owe all that shit back. No, and that's one thing that I, I feel <laughs> like, like, people who aren't in music don't realize is, like, you think that these people are on. Yeah, but they're not. They're not always. And that's what I'm saying. Like, nothing is reality. Don't trust everything you see. Or want to be like these people. I don't want to be like they're, they're the most miserable people. I don't say all of them, but some of them, yeah. Mo- most of them. Because it's like, at the end of the day, like, they're owned, right? They don't have freedom. But it looks that way. That's depressing. Some people wanted it. Because they have nothing else to live for. But it's like if people like come in, because again, like I feel like the most people that are targeted most is like hurt people. Like, for example, I think when they got Janae, she was being, you know, she was on pills, she was depressed, and same, same thing with. But all these little zams and little, they're all just in a bad space and they want something greater. It's the best way to feed, feed a mind is as a visual of something greater. Oh, yeah. Rather than like the actual healing of it, you know? Sucks, but again, that's why like people like us are powerful because like we can offer something that comes with healing so that they're not dependent on what they see because again social media is all fake people only post the good parts some people post the bad parts i was about to say something though is it all fake though because i mean there's truth to it but and i just said this i guess i'm thinking in a personal sense where it's like i don't feel like i try to like glorify oh no of course not me either glamorize yeah. Sometimes I'm literally just walking outside. Yeah. And I take a really nice picture. Me and too. I post something inspirational or uplifting because while I'm walking, this is why I'm out here. So I can uplift myself. But that's us. So I want you to do it too. I'm here walking. Let's both get it. You feel me? It's, it's the people that, especially women, right? They feel like they can only go out with a full face of makeup on. Mm-hmm. Those are the people I'm talking about. Or people that need to buy a whole fresh new outfit in order to, to go 
and go outside. You know, those are the people I'm talking about. It's like they're dependent on what they see as like above them. Because, right, like there's a worship factor to the industry and these idols. That's what that's the system. That sucks. Having to feed into an appearance is horrible. Exactly. We don't do no appearances. No. Exactly. I just look like this, bro. Me too. I just wake up. I don't look like this, but I can supply this. <laughs> you know? Not... But I don't have no problem with my afro either. Oh, I hear you. That's the part. Yeah, yeah. I did put my hair in a pony. You know, but you still, you still in your element. You know? I don't like... have to go buy new clothes. Like, the last episode, I was wearing a hoodie. I have for the last two, three years. There you go. For what? <laughs> yeah, it's not in you. I mean, it's not on you. It's in you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it's about energy. It's how you, you can be dressed bummy as hell. But if you feel confident, they're going to notice you. Oh, yeah. It's more so how you carry yourself. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you can see somebody who doesn't look the part you think that they should. Mm -hmm. But the air that they carry with themselves and how they just treat themselves, you like... They're literally like, are you supposed to? All right, they act like they're supposed to be here, so I'm gonna just let them be here. Yeah. And I feel like that's just something that we have to learn. It's just like, I don't have to look a certain way to fit in. Like, yeah. I don't have to, you feel me? Like, I'm trying to think of an analogy. I don't know why. <laughs> but like, you don't have to fake something in order to be accepted. Like, exactly, yeah. This is like authentic authenticity. Is going to read rather than mm -hmm. anything you can prepare for a moment. Yep. And it's like, another thing about that is like, authenticity doesn't necessarily look pretty either. They think perfect is real. But that's what's accepted and what's needed. It's like, no. The imperfect is what's beautiful. And that's why I was, I, I was saying earlier, sometimes you just give people that, oh, all right, well. I can be confident in myself too. Exactly. Yeah. This is like it's not a matter of looking the same or looking alike or playing a part. It is the matter of knowing it's okay. Like this is not just good enough, but a standard in itself. Like yeah, exactly. I meet my standard. Like <laughs> you yeah, don't exactly. have to raise your bar if you'd like to, but exactly. I've hit my standard. And if not don't meet it's other, personal. Don't meet other people's expectations. Yeah, it's like you set the standard for you. Definitely. And once you start living that way, 